Hey everyone, welcome back again to another exciting episode of the Iconist Podcast. Um, one of your hosts here, Barry 3D for Deep Dark Delicious. You know what it is, and you know what I do. And of course, I'm never alone because on my side is the one, the only, the man that I love so much. And not only because he's family, but because he's also one of my best friends, right? So, you know, you can have best friends in his family and that, that's a two for right there and you can't get closer than that. Hear it up for my man on my side, the one and only... DJ Rossi. Hey, what are you doing? What? What's up? What's up? <laughs> DJ Rod C. How's yes, life sir. treating you, brother? Life is good, man. Life is good. Just uh, came out from the outside. You know, the elements are after you, but you know, it's okay. As I always say, Storm, Storm Trooper got me pinned down, but I prevailed. I made it out. <laughs> Storm Trooper's got it pinned down. Man, you know Storm Troopers ain't got no aim. You good, man. Storm that's Troopers, why I know. That's why I can make it out. That, that's why you can make it out. See, my theory is, is hold on. Here's a theory. I believe stormtroopers were not the clone of, of Django Fett. They were descendants of someone in Cobra from G.I. Joe. Let's ponder on that one. Mm-hmm. Hey, we if will Serpentor, have to... if Serpentor was made almost like a clone-ish, right? They have the technology. And I think they just kind of recycled the troopers year over year and a couple of chromosomes were missing. And clearly it was vision impaired. So I'm going with that. Stormtroopers are descendants. <laughs> We, we could, listen, it makes sense. Wild enough, it makes sense. It makes That's my so much sense. Theory for the day. It makes so much sense. <laughs> oh, shoot. Jokes. I call it what it is, man. I call it what, oh, it, is. what it is. So, first, um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for, mm-hmm. for being here and rocking with us still. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 and, 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 and we're excited. We're excited to kick off this one. It's a little bit of a different one we're doing today, but hey. Sometimes you gotta have variety. Variety. Cool. So okay. what's the variety today, Barry? What's the variety we have today? Oh, let us all know. Oh, it's very, it's very simple, man. It's like lovers' lane. You know what I mean? I need love, right? We Saturday love. Let me tell you why Saturday love is so good on this one. This is a whole episode. I saw on, the setup. You saw the setup. You I knew what was it. coming. First of all, to our fans, you guys are listening to this for first of all. Thank you for watching this on Tuesdays when we drop the videos. And mm-hmm. thank you for listening on, on all the podcast um, streaming sites that you have because we drop the episodes on Wednesday. So, you know, the videos on Tuesday, audio on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Let me know if that works for you. We might need uh, to do it all in one day. Anyways, hmm. you know, we don't want to overwhelm you, but there's a lot. Uh, and, and, and we record these episodes ahead of time. So, when, of course, you know, you're on the Tuesday, Wednesday schedule. But this mm-hmm. episode was actually recorded Saturday. Mm-hmm. <gasps> And, and we're talking about the best couples that we've seen in any medium, right? And I'm talking like, in, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Marvel, DC, Image, um, your independent books, uh, video games, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, any sci-fi show, any couple we could think of, we're going to talk about just real briefly and go over because, you know, this is our Valentine's Day special. I'm sitting here wearing Love red. Is in the air. My, my, my head is, is freshly shaved. That's right. I, I got my, you know, Harry's Club razors and freshly, freshly shaved the cocoa. No, you got a beard. You can rock a beard, Rod. I can't rock a beard. Because uh, when I try to grow a beard, it looks like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to grow a beard. It comes in all patchy like that guy there from Team America. <laughs> Mental note, it takes a while. You have to go through time. Ask me how I know. But we won't get back to that part. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, I, I don't got that patience, man. I, no, I try to grow my beard. And, and man, mm-mm, mm-mm. it comes out. I said patchy. Like, it levels like pubes in my face. So, uh, no. No, that's why I, I keep mine smooth, top and bottom. You know what I mean? Right on. I, I, when I say bottom, I'm talking to the my bottom of my face. Not, okay. That's cool. All right. Um, Too much info. You know, TMI, Too much TMI. Info. So, that, that's what it is. So, we recorded on Saturday. We talk about love. Mm-hmm. So, hey, this is a hashtag to my favorite song. What is yeah. it? Saturday night love. Saturday love, man. What I say, Saturday. I say Saturday night. Cheese on oh, bread. See, Holy that's what Toledo. happens when you deal with a comedian and a DJ. The DJ is only used to working one medium. You know? Holy! <laughs> I need to work on that. I need to work on that. Holy. Right, right. So, hey, before we kick off this show into all the couples that we kind of made a list of here, you know, uh, as I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you could support the show, please let us know. That'd be awesome. There's links below. Uh, you know, tip, tips, donates on on coffee uh, or coffee site, right? And, and 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 thank you, just just simply thank you. And we're gonna just do a quick round table. So first of all, I want to do a shout out to uh, my comedy brothers, Touch a Great Comedy. Can't miss it. Look for the Facebook page, see our YouTube page. We got hundred, 
over 115, whatever, still growing videos on everything from funny to serious and what's touch a gray belt. We are the Canadian version of the plastic cup boys. We are the Canadian version of blue color comedy. That's, that's the best way to describe it. We are comedians. We are fathers. We're friends. And we've been rocking live and on video um, for a couple of years now. So, you know, when things are starting to slowly open up, come and check us out. Can't miss it. And that's Thomas Patrice, Zolf Ali, myself, Barry 3D, and the man behind it uh, who puts it all together. And, and, and we have to put up with all that craziness, Dave Sokolowski. So thank you, Dave. We're sorry, Dave. We bug Dave, and I'm sure Dave wants to, some days wants to choke us, but it's okay. So that's first and foremost, Touch of Grey Comedy. You can find us everywhere. Follow the links on my flow code at the end of the video. Uh, nice. You know, and for those who are listening, you know, look for on our main our main page or uh, iconist.podbean.com, and you'll see the links below for that or on our YouTube channel. We have the links. So we, we've made it everywhere. Uh, next, you know, back to the balcony with my boy Jimmy English. Hmm. He talks about all movies and he brings on guests all the time weekly show he's in season two i'm not sure when he's been getting to season three but i'm sure he's close to it lots of videos a lot of backlog backlog there of things and interesting shows you can listen to um the good the bad the ugly as i like to say he doesn't say that but i say it and he touches on you know all like, unknown facts and and fun things about any uh movie that he talk about they bring on a lot of guests i've been blessed to be a guest on there many times and nice. looking forward to being more of a guest on there in the future too so uh, the last one I talked about was Excalibur. I did touch on Fritz the Cat. I touched on, you know, thank God it's Friday, old school movie. Ah, classic. Jeff Goldblum's very first movie. Find the episode, listen to it, get back to me. Nice. Uh, then, of course, you know, there's, there's um, my boy, Wayne Tennant. He's got an <laughs> album on Spotify right now, on Spotify, and it's called Curfew Flowers. It's got like eight tracks on there, um, you know. Uh, my favorite one is Vapors. Wow. I like that up te up upbeat tempo. tempo. Upbeat. upbeat tempo. Uh, that one speaks to me. Uh, clearly, you can tell I, I talk fast, so I dance fast. If you know me as a hip-hop dancer, you would understand. Uh, and that that's the one. That's my track that made there, Vapors. Yo, yo. So Wayne Tennant, Curfew Flowers on Spotify. Give him a follow. Let him know you heard about mm -hmm. on the Iconist podcast. Right? He's, he's local here in Canada. And, and of course... The reach is worldwide. Come on, Wayne, go for it. Uh, then, you know, we're, we're almost there. A uh, couple more to go. So uh, when you're in Montreal, you want to okay. get your books, you want to get some sports cards or anything like Let's that, memorabilia, um, you know, games, like board games, Dungeons and Dragons, any kind of those accessories. And mm -hmm. even like t-shirts. I got a cool Gatcha Man t-shirt from there. Check out Check Swings in Montreal just off of Tasho Boulevard. Tell Trevor that you heard about it from the Iconist podcast. Another favorite yeah. comic book store I like to go to is over in Ottawa, not Ottawa, sorry, Ontario. Uh, when you're in Ontario, yeah, I'm, I'm driving too much. When you're in Ontario, you head up to Kitchener and you go mm -hmm. to Wow Comics. Trust me, half a million comic books in there. Tell Wes Ramon that you heard about the Iconist podcast. We sent you there no. and, and they'll hook you up. They've got everything, back issues, current issues, statues, memorabilia, magazines, you, you, you name it, they have it. If you go to your normal comic book store and they don't have something, they source it from them because they ship out also. So definitely tell those guys we said hi. And usually when I'm in the area doing a, com uh, a, a, a comedy show in Kitchener or around the area, Cambridge and all that, I usually I make a pit stop in there uh, on comic book Wednesdays or on Saturdays, I'll make the drive up there and just kind of pad my collection, so to speak. So there's a good chance you might mm -hmm. see me up in there and sometimes shoot some videos in there. And if not, check out the videos below on our YouTube page and you'll see me do a walkthrough check swings and wow, comics. Which brings me to the man that makes us look so pretty. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Uh, Jason Reese, but he's known better as... Jay Bird! Jay Let's Bird Digital Arts. Jay Bird Digital Arts. All Arts. your Arts. media, right? So if you need templates, logos, posters, you know, be it if it's virtual or actual physical copies, Jay Bird mm -hmm. Digital will hook you up info at the end of the video link down below can't miss it show some love and you know i know everyone's got a lot of social media presence all over the place very simple you want to find where i'm at you can check out barry3d.com that is my main website got my links to everything from iconis touch of gray the man project gorilla comedy uh, my all my social media links are on there. This is on there. J trust me. Just I got a blog. I've got a tour schedule. So 
check it out. I know March 4th, I believe, we're going to be out in Jarvis, Ontario, over at Concession Brewery with the rest of Touch of Grey doing a comedy show. So you know nice. where to find us. Get your seats. Do it. Limited seating. Uh, tickets are going fast. Now, Rod, hmm. where hmm. can we find you? Listen, you can find me. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me at Mr. Rod C. You can connect from there. And when you pass through, just you know, follow and just say, "Hey, I found you from Iconis." Wicked. Thank you very much. Also, then you can find me on Twitch. I play there weekly. Do a lot of pop ups in between. More as the 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 time gets better, you know, winter coming out, we're going to spring. I'll be playing on more often. But you can definitely find me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash DJ Rod C. So you can find me. And listen, once you're out there again, same thing. When you come in, say hi, come through, chat up with everybody. Let's have some fun. Just say, you know, hey, I followed you from Iconis. Nice. Give you a hail up. Listen, we're going to have some fun today. So that's where you can find me. And we will go. From, we can continue from there. But you know what? We got. We got today is special. Today is special. It's the. It's the lovers edition. It's the lovers edition of. The lover in you. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go. One day, if I take you home, will what? you still be in love, baby? Because I need you tonight. Uh oh. <laughs> Mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay, I'm gonna have to put don't that. Know. Oh, you don't that. know, you should know. Lisa, Lisa, yeah. and Coke know. Jam. Let's do right it. on. So Let's we're gonna it. go through the couples that really stand out to us, some that we want to see a little bit more from, some that we hope some things were different. Uh how mm-hmm. they, you know they did it in the comic books and, and why it would have been stronger if they would have kept them together instead of breaking them up. All right, right mm-hmm. on. So I'm going to kick it off and I'm gonna open my list. Uh very simple. One couple that always stood out to me. This is a DC universe. I wish that, you know, they, they played with it with Earth 1, Earth 2. They did them differently. This is back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. And this is Batman and Catwoman. Right? Yeah. Right. It, so, you know, when you had Earth 1 and Earth 2, and you had the Justice League and you had the Justice Society. On Justice League, Earth 1, Batman and Catwoman were adversaries. They kind of flirted. They kind of skated the surface and meh, went on about it. <laughs> but on earth two they committed earth two they said oh they had more freedom that was when dc was doing the earth two stories it was almost like well we we, we're going to give the fans almost what they wanted we're going to put certain characters together in committed relationships in ongoing and see what happens it was almost like they're else worlds what if you know so Mm else worlds before else worlds was uh, existing in the dc universe they kind of did that when they every time they want to do something different it's like, we would experiment with it, but let's see. And I liked it. Fans liked mm-hmm. it because Earth 2, and this is where, to me, it starts from. That's where I noticed it from. Earth 2, they made, you know, Batman, Catwoman, same general history from mm-hmm. each individual character. When instead of the flirting, the flirting went to a certain level. She reformed. She, she did her time. She reformed. Um, then she teamed up with Batman. They started fighting crime. Then, you know, Bruce Wayne, Selena Kyle turned around, got married. Now, this doesn't take away anything from Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson stole in the picture because in Earth 2, the characters are older than Earth 1. So Bruce Wayne was, you know, prior uh, the Dark Knight Returns, he was at that age. He had the gray hair. You know, he did retire from being Batman. Robin mm. was a grown man. So instead of Robin taking on the mantle of Nightwing in Earth 2 at the time, he just was Robin. But his costume was a mix of Robin and Batman's look. But Bruce Wayne, Selina Kyle got married. They retired. They had a child. That child was Helena Wayne, who became the Huntress. Yes. Right? When that union, and, and, and in the justice, you know, and then in that storyline, yep. at one point, um, Catwoman had to go back to being Catwoman. You know, now she's retired, hasn't done this in years. She got mm-hmm. blackmailed, ended up getting killed. Bruce Wayne stopped being Batman and took over as a commissioner of the police. But he had to put on a costume one last time you know, with the Justice Society uh, went on a mission. He got killed in front of Robin and um, Huntress, you know? So Mm. that that whole dynamic was really cool. And now they always, up to now, kind of skate on that uh, in the present prime, you know, Earth One universe of putting them together, not putting them together. To me, Put, put put the couple together and stop with the drama. Like, really, they almost had a wedding, <laughs> didn't have a wedding, then they put them together. And then it's, uh, you know, even in the animated series, um, the, the Justice League cartoons, uh, you know, the one shots. To me, that's a couple that stands out. I think that's a couple that if they put them together, 
bring in Helena Wayne that way as a biological child, hmm. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. it. It would be, would it change it? Yeah. You know, I, I, I like Batman, but he doesn't have to be angry and lonely for his whole life. <laughs> and none of this weirdness that, you know, he, he, he dated that girl. No, 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 no. That, that was more weird to me than anything. So that's, that's one of my shots, Rod. What, what, what do you have? So definitely, definitely a, a good, a good, a good foundation one for me. I was going to, I'm now on Marvel side. I wanted to go with, um, a long relationship you've known from back in the days, Hulk, Bruce Banner, and Betty Ross. Nice. So, nice. I, I mean, I, I mean, if anybody's looking and thinking, look, we're just coming for the lovey dove type of co- characters, we'll get to them as well. Yeah. But we want to show that at least the couples and at least letting them know, you know what? There's a lot of different things that's going on. So Bruce and Betty, that's a long standing type of relationship. Um, as we known, they've they've been on and off, married many times, you know, a good couple of times. Betty, you know, has her has her connection to Bruce. She's basically we we just said it. Um, I think we said it in one of our recent ones in regards to, like, say, Wally West and Iris. How yes. Iris is his lightning rod to, to tether him to bring him down. Right. To, you know, just to, in that sense, not to bring him down, but at least to center him if he gets a little bit too off kind right. of scenario. Right. Betty is Hulk's lightning rod. Betty is 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 Hulk's basically center point. As we all know, that's the great thing about their relationship. Beast is the beauty and the beast type of narrative. Right. She's basically the one that whenever he goes rampant or whatever, anything along that line, once he realizes Betty's here, he starts to calm down. So to center himself, and if yep. transm- transformation is needed at the time, he will transform back from Hulk to Bruce. Absolutely. But that that connection is is basically, I mean, we all we all know those type of we know we know that story we know that connection. But just to bring it to the forefront to let everybody know, um, you know, the, the struggles that Ben has with with his inner beast and everything like yeah. that, and having that person who is able to center him. You know, and, and basically, you know, represent the normal part of his life that you know what he wants. He wants to have a normal life. He wants to have something with Betty. Betty wants to have something with him. But then there's a third guy in the air called Hulk. Other than that, bum, 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 Yo. the three, the three, the three personas will have to figure themselves out, which they do and have. So this is a great way of showing that Betty, Betty Ross is is a pivotal um, couple with Robert, Bruce, the Hulk, Banner. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I and I and two good story arcs with them. I can't remember the issue numbers, but I remember the artist that drew it. So I'm very visual. So when Todd McFarlane was drawing the Incredible Hulk, mm-hmm. that was a good story arc with Betty, the Gray Hulk, um, him running from Shield and trying to fight the leader at the same time. And you know that that was really well done story arc there with Todd McFarlane. So if you find that Todd McFarlane run with the Hulk, mm-hmm. hands you know hands up thumb you know thumbs up absolutely 100 percent. and the other one was uh after that um when i think it was after that storyline yeah, but john bryan john bryan goes and starts taking on the duties of drawing the hulk again and i think he was actually writing it too i'm not sure of that but he was definitely drawing it and that's when bruce banner and the hulk got separated and they had to make the, the new hulk busters to go and chase him down and, and right. you see bruce banner is almost in a wheelchair because he's so weak at one point uh, mm-hmm. and and him and betty they go through their whole Thing. So those are really two good story arcs that really emphasize showing how good and important Betty is. And I, and I would love to see that continue. Um, and there was another one when uh, they brought in the Pantheon, right? And it was Dale, mm. uh, I can't remember his last name right now. He was the artist behind that where, you know, they combined the Grey Hulk, the Savage Hulk, and then they made this new version of the Hulk where he had all his intelligence. He was still just as big and he joined this group, the Pantheon, and Betty was in there. You know, he thought Betty was gone. He's trying to reconcile his uh, relationship. So absolutely, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I, I like that. that. That's that's a good call out there, that there's some Saturday love. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. we'll sneak this in as much as possible to, to Rod's chagrin. It's a good thing we do this via Zoom over the, because if Rod was beside me, he'd be slapping me off the back of the head. So <laughs> no, 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 far from that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Right. So, okay. So we're going to go back. I'm going to go back now to DC, right? And this is to show you the strength of this relationship. 
and I think it could have very, very many variables, but I like this version of it. So everyone knows Superman and Lois. Mm -hmm. We've seen Superman with different characters. They put Superman with Wonder Woman, Superman, Lana Lang, um, Superman, Lois. And I think a lot of times it doesn't, they, they haven't really found, in my opinion, that, that true connection on screen with the two proper actors with it. But at the time, I'm talking now, when I say yeah, on screen, so, yeah. you know, um, some of the earlier ones, if the chemistry was there, it wasn't there. I thought it was maybe one sided. And I think the, the, the times it comes through the best is currently right now with Superman and Lois. About the same, yeah. PW. And I like this that, you know, Superman's a little bit older. And I like, see, what makes this one different to me than all the other times that Lois is into Superman and even the Man of Steel? The Man of Steel, I'll put it up there too. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you why. Very simple. In the comic book, when they did the Man of Steel comic book with John Bryan was mm -hmm. doing that mini issue, five issue, six issue mini series, they brought him back, you know, because this was like they did the whole Man of Tomorrow. They re retconned Superman, they made him a little bit weaker, so he's not moving planets off the way. Every time Lois was infatuated with Superman, even though Clark's in front of her and she would dismiss Clark, but Clark wanted Lois, so he was in a love triangle with himself. Mm -hmm. With Superman and Lois, they actually did an episode in season one showing how Lois Lane fell in love with Clark Kent, not Superman. Thank mm -hmm. you. Like, I, I was tired of always seeing Lois daydreaming about being with Superman, dismissing Clark. And then when she finds out Clark is Superman, it's like, oh, okay, I can date you with this persona because I understand you're trying to hide that persona. But I, you know, just like anyone in a certain role, mm -hmm. and this is in real life, like this, is especially with Hollywood, you have all these Hollywood actors, actresses, and they always question musicians saying, hey, I met so-and-so, I like this girl, but I don't know if she likes me for me or likes me for my onstage persona, likes me because I am a rock star and not mm -hmm. the person behind the rock star or behind the actor. You know, it's like if Brad Pitt has to go and date now and Jason Momoa, are you liking Jason Momoa and Brad Pitt because of Jason and Brad? Or are you liking them because of Brad Pitt and Jason Momoa, the on-screen heartthrobs, you know, mega stars they are, right? right? So the fact that they wrote lois and they showed that in an episode it was a nice kind of montage and little bits and pieces here how you know clark met lois how he could almost pretty much love at first sight he left lana behind but really love at first sight and that was okay and then he and 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 went her over with just being genuine and nice and then when it got to a point talked to his parents and mom you know his parents uh, his mom at the time it's like mom she's the one she's she's the one mom there's like, well, Clark, you know what you have to do. You're, you're going to have to, if she's the one, you feel your identity. And he did. And I'm, I love that they didn't write her doing the, I can't believe you lied to me all these years without telling me you were Superman. Right. Right. She was logical and saying, oh, that explains some things because there's times you were there and not. Now, now I know it wasn't. So I, I really like that they addressed the fact that Lois didn't freak out that Clark was Superman. She right. didn't know Clark was Superman. He kept his identity that well, and 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 she accepted it. She, you know, and it's like, okay, I get it. You know, I'm tired of always seeing where the hero falls in love with somebody, reveals their identity, and then they have to go through. Oh, that's a. I don't know if I can handle that. You lied to me. You should have come and trust me from the get go. Right. If you're and, and Superman. Thank you. Right. Go on, if you're, go on, go on. You got villains like Lex Luthor and Brainiac and Bizarro and, and Doomsday and, and, and all these people trying to find out your secret identity to cause pain to you. And if they can't get you, your family, and you've seen that, this is why you kind of had to distance yourself from your from Smallville and move away to try to protect your parents, even though he's close. His parents understood that. They raised them and understood that. You accept your child for who you are. And that's a true, true talk. Bring well, someone else in. Yeah, but I mean, even even the parents, the parents understood why they were protected because they they know from a young age yep. that Clark is unique and special. If certain people, government realize who he is, yep. will come and take him away and do not harm to him, but basically, like you know what, he will not have a normal life. No, they so you could to weaponize him, so you can understand why the parents will say, "We need to keep you isolated. The outside world doesn't know about you." Same way you're saying now that if you have any logic. And, and I agree with you in regards to Lois, in regards to always having these type of Lois slash any of any character who basically now being revealed, they've been told, like, here's my secret identity. This is who I am. 
and you're now going to come back being very um, judgmental and yes. harsh and stuff like that. But the people who are very, who should be very logical minded, like Lois, she's a reporter. She's like, you know, Nobel, you know, Nobel Prize writer. You know, she basically yeah. is, she's, she's top notch. She's like Pulse the hundred top. Yeah. She pulls from, thank you, pulls from um, writer. So she, she has logic in her head. So you should understand as soon as he says, my name is Clark Kent. Oh, I understand why you weren't here. And I look around and you're gone. I understand this, 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 but I fully understand why you never told me. You need to keep that thing straight because she knows who his, who are Superman's villains, not Clark's, yeah. but she knows who Superman's villains are. So now they're realizing you're, ah, now I can understand. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. That don't one, get, I, don't. I think CW banged it out the park. You know, I'm Completely. more of a Batman fan. I'll tell you this, but the truth, the truth, I'm more of a Batman fan, but I love what, Superman and you know and Lo and, Lois and, is. Uh, even Smallville. Smallville did it okay. I, I they did yeah. a good job, but you know I didn't like that he was never Superman in Smallville. That's what always irked me. I, you know he was the blur. I get what they're doing, but they you know the creators he didn't want to. Were, he didn't he didn't want to. He, he, he didn't want himself. to. But even the creators, the creators said we're never going to put him in the Superman costume, right? And uh, you know the day we do that is the day we end the show, and that's what they did. And then it was just a teaser. It was just like a little dot on the screen. You see red and blue. Completely. I wanted a full picture of. Uh, uh, of the, uh, oh my God, of the actor there, uh, Tom Tom Welling. Tom, 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 Tom Welling. Well, he did. He yeah. did on the very, the very, very last one. He had it. He had it on. I think it was more of a CGI superimposed. Well, well I've always, it, but they didn't show him head to toe. What they did is they showed it from a, his thigh down. You saw no. him from the back, and he was rising up. You, you never got a full frontal picture of him in the costume anyone you're seeing is just one they've manipulated online when you watch that last episode you see him put on the costume you see the costume you see him in the costume from his thigh down to his foot he starts to fly you see him from the back and it kind of goes back so it's from the distance and then you see him flying in the air and that's cgi of course um but it never zoomed in you see someone on a plane looking and you see the red cape and the blue and the streak and you're like okay and he's actually flying so that you know so that was cool but i'm saying this cw one i love it because mm -hmm. lois fell in clark kent lois fell in love with clark kent mm -hmm. they had their relationship she he revealed the identity she didn't freak out and then they had kids right <laughs> they had they had a child and then crisis of infinite earth he calls back lois i'm on my way back yeah can you get diapers for the for the twins twins i remember that episode made me yes. weak with laughter and i was like <laughs> There's two of them? <laughs> yeah. And I got theories, and I'm going to say this right here. I think, depending on how this show's going to write it, they might write the twins to take up the mantle of, um, uh, is it Nightwing and, and Flamebird? Right? So this that's just my theory. That's just my theory, right? Because I know everyone's going to say, no, Barry Nightwing's puts Batman. No, 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 no. Let's go back. Go back to your old school Superman comic books and you'll realize in the bottle city of Kandor, there was two crime fighters and their original names were Night, Nightwing and Flamebird, who were heroes for the city of Kandor. They, they had um, lore from before that. So when Superman was talking to Dick Grayson at one point after him and Bruce Wayne had a falling out, he's like, I mm -hmm. need a new identity. And it was Superman that told him the tales of Kandor and told him about Nightwing and Flamebird and and Dick Grayson liked the name Nightwing. And in honor of that, he said, hey, Clark, is it okay if I carry on with that Nightwing as my new persona? And he goes, I'd be honored to it. So this has always been a sore spot with Batman because Batman trained and raised Dick Grayson. And in a rebellious thing, Dick Grayson goes, yeah, I'm going to follow Superman. And go with his name. Go, go with, with his choice. A name that is influenced by him. Mm -hmm. And how do you think that sits with Batman? Like, I did all this stuff for you, and now you're going to take someone else's name? <laughs> like, Darn Robin it. is under, right? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, that, I'll, that's I'll, a couple. I'll, well, let's even, I know we're segueing, everybody. Please give us a couple of seconds. I even just got to say this. I don't know if you saw the last episode, or yes, recent episode. So you can see how a certain someone is, might be, uh, they might be opening up that door. So uh -huh. I saw that I'm like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay, we'll uh -huh. come back to next next time. Okay, yeah. everyone. So let's go back. <laughs> yeah, and if you look at Nightwing and Flamebird in the comic book, mm -hmm. one has black hair, one has like blondish hair, 
Oh, interesting. Oh, so they're going that route. Oh, okay, that's good. Oh. That's good. So that I found was very interesting, and I like the fact of how they brought in Henry Rivers. But that's that's probably okay. maybe we should do another show. Yeah, well, like I say, we'll go with that. That was saying, please, we apologize. We apologize yeah, we, for the segue. Please allow us to realign ourselves with the show. We're realigning now. Congratulations! <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're back again online. <laughs> So let's just say I like that one. All right, Rod, who yes. you got next, man? So here's um, I have a couple of people. So you know what? I'm just Go gonna on. bring this one to the front. So we just mentioned this person's name. We're gonna talk about um, Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson. You, you we could we could have had that on my list. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we're gonna have a couple that we're gonna we're going to we're gonna overlap, uh, overlap easily. And and again, whoever brings it up first, we'll just talk about it. All but right. I mean, I mean, that definitely let's do it. I just, I'm just doing the short end of it. Like I just come in and just say, listen, these two are 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 like the the. You have Batman and you have Catwoman, and everybody mm-hmm. loving that particular connection. Mm-hmm. You have the famous, we talked about it, Clark Kent, Superman, and Lois mm-hmm. in the Batman universe in the Batman world. Mm-hmm. There's like there's it's hard to like there's like no other bigger you know. Couple, I mean, there's Batman and, and Catwoman, but that kind of came later on because of their eh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But right, nearly right. from the beginning, yeah, true. Barbara Gordon and true. Dick Grayson. Yeah, listen, that's that's um, that's a a, a a wonderful. I love watching them. I love watching creators and actors. I mean, I mean, in the sense of the comic books, they definitely always made that little, you know. Are they together? Are they, you know, are they, you know, the little teasing, whatever, you know, there's something going on and, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Then you full out, you know, they are doing something, you know, they're, they're connected. But like in, um, gosh, I just, I just went black, just young justice. Yes. I'm just loving that. How in the beginning, you never really saw that, but then like, cause at the end of season two, mm-hmm. when basically when they were saying like, you know what, Dick is, Dick is saying like, you know what? I'm stepping down, Kaldar. You take over, whatever the case it be. Yes, yes, you know, yes. business as usual. Barbara can take, you know, she can fully stand up and, you know, take, take, you know, take lead and all that kind of jazz. But then you see the following season now, she's Oracle and they're having their own little conversations. They're having their own little mimical talk. I'm like, oh, I'm loving this. So I hopefully hope that they, you know, definitely bring that in some more and, you know, just open up that door and just open, just give us some more, just give us some more with that. But to me, Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson have been a wonderful couple because we've seen them basically grown up together and yes. the relationship and the stands that they've gone through that they are, they're like, they're like that. They're the non non powered power couple. Yes. Yes. Cause absolutely. they understand, they understand what they can and can't do. They know they're in, in, in the sense of power levels and everything like that, that they're, you know, they don't have superpowers, right. but they have, it's, they have, great you know speed strength in the sense of human human speed human you know top of speed top of strength you know trained basically by by batman himself and have the the knowledge of how to be great detectives because they're great detectives let's not even let's not even short come them on that joke about that oh my god okay. no so so they it's like it's like that's what i'm saying they're, they're the non-power power couple because they basically can work off each other so well and i love how the writers are constantly just making sure that we are reminded that yes. These two are a couple that you just you can't you can't you can't mess with them, and you're just weaning to hear more. What else are you going to put in on our plate that we can take in the yes. the Barbara and, and and Dick at our basically you know like like oh my like, gosh. It, okay. like if they if they were to make a show honestly it's one of those things that. <laughs> If CW where well does well, something. Yeah, okay. So hold, hold that thought for half a second. Don't do that. So I know there's talk about CW turning around doing a show called Gotham Knights. It's not gonna have Batman in it. It's gonna mm-hmm. have uh Nightwing. He's also gonna have Dick Grayson, uh Tim Drake, uh Jason Todd, and Barbara Gordon. Now I don't know how they're gonna spin Perfect. the show. It's called Gotham oh. Knights. That's the Perfect. talk, that's a rumor of that going on right now. Uh, back to your point about Nightwing, yes, because I remember I used to, uh, you know, collect Nightwing when he first came out with his book. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I was and I was really into it. And I, there was a, a, when you say about a detective, this is where it shows how good he is. He's at home, in you know, grabbing a shower, and he's bored, right? 
and he's mm-hmm. talking to Barbara on the phone, and Barbara's like, hey, what have you been up to? Because he's now in Bloodhaven. She's over in Gotham. Right. And he's having a conversation, and he goes, oh, hold on a second. I got to make a call. And then he's just been calling. You know, so you know those shows, um, uh, Cold Case Files, um, right. you know, uh, uh, yeah. any yeah. show where it deals with, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, unsolved mysteries. You know, unsolved, unsolved mysteries. mysteries. Exactly. I know exactly what I'm like thinking. Okay. What's the name of it? Right. That's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So unsolved mysteries. So he's watching that, and she's like, "What you do all day?" He goes, "Oh, well, I've been watching unsolved mysteries, just relaxing." And hold mm-hmm. on, I gotta make a call. Yeah. Uh, I just looked over the show. Check here. Check here. Check to this person. This alibi doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, I'm an anonymous caller. Bye. Click. And he <laughs> called in the show all for like a day. All he did was sit down for a day or a weekend, and that's what he would do Listen. in his off time: is sit there, watch unsolved mysteries. And then solve those mysteries. And they and you hear it's like once again, we we got another anonymous tip to do this, and we just solved this case, and we just solved that case. And this anonymous caller keeps calling in. Hey, anonymous caller, please make yourself know. Like, how do you figure all this stuff out? He's not even on the streets. He's sitting at home watching TV, eating popcorn, and how Listen. you here as our audience is watching this show and entertained by it. He's watching unsolved mysteries because people like those murder mysteries, but not just in there going, Oh, that's interesting. He solves them. And on the yeah. phone with Barbara. So, and, and this is going to bring into Sudway. So we're still going to continue with this. Right? So yeah, we we'll have I'm, to come I'm back to all this. I'm for Barbara Gordon. I mean, and in the original run, when Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson met each other for the first time, it was mm-hmm. part of that. You know, they met each other. There was crossovers in the Batman comic books. But then there was right. a book called The Superman Family, Batman Family. There's these thicker uh, comics that just dealt with, you know, Batman, uh, 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 Robin, mm-hmm. Batgirl. Man Bat, sometimes Bat Mite made an, ep- an appearance in there, you know, uh, Ace the Bat Dog, but it was called the Batman Family. And I remember at the time, the book we used to go for about a dollar, but it was a thick book where books were at least at that time, 30 something cents, 35 cents. Mm-hmm. So you had all these issues in there, you know, and, and, and it would be, you know, and they would have continuous lines. And there was points where it was a Batman, Batgirl and Robin team up. And they admit that Robin from day one had a crush on Batgirl. Mm-hmm. had a crush on Batgirl yep. liked her from their first adventure she says he was cute but she wasn't into him because he was younger and then you know he's hitting because like, he, you know she's ready to college and he's like you know high school or she's late high school right. he's early high school yeah. you know so there's always that age gap when he got into college and they still started teaming up they still kind of he still pursued her and that was that relationship there. That's to show you how far back those two go. In you know, in Elseworlds tales, you know, they they talk about them having a kid and so forth like that. And I think that's a power couple that I would love to see finally get together on the same page. Because if you're thinking someone trained by Batman from a young age, mm-hmm. right, almost the same age as Batman got his training from, and even more intense, you know, because he had someone to show him, and he was out in the field a lot earlier than Bruce Wayne was. You know, Bruce Wayne put on the Batman costume in his 20s. Dick Grayson was Robin at the age of 12. Mm-hmm. You know, 11, 12. And he's out there fighting crime. So, Absolutely. Right. So that's that's one to show you how he's more advanced than his mentor, which is good. I'm not saying that in a bad way. And then you got Batgirl, who is a genius, you know, gets paralyzed, builds herself back up as Oracle, information gatherer, you know, and informs birds of prey and all that. So they... Those two together would be beautiful. And my segue on that is because there's another person that really stands out, and that was on my list, is mm-hmm. Nightwing and Starfire from Teen Titans. Listen, I was kind of like, okay, go on. Perfect, perfect, because that's exactly – you. if you're going to do – if we're going to talk about Barbara and, and – and, you see, you got you to say it this way. Mm-hmm. You see, I said right. Barbara and Dick, that's one – like one type of – you know, one part of his life. Yes. And there's Nightwing and Starfire. Like, yeah. although it's Dick, it's Dick, it's Dick and, and Starfire as well. Of course, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah, but yeah. In, in reality, I've always kind of like, you have to say it like Nightwing as the character and Starfire. Right, right. Because she yeah. never really had a secret identity. She, she turned around and she's like, you know, she's taller than Dick from a different mm-hmm. uh, universe. And she was attracted to Dick from day one, mm-hmm. you know? from day one she was attracted to to you know i know yes i'm gonna say you know what i'm saying and it sounds like a joke she was attracted to dick from day one ha ha, ha. okay i've got over my little you know <laughs> childish moment <laughs> uh, so you know uh to, to nightwing we'll say richard grayson 
She was mm-hmm. from issue one. So that was, you know, Marv Wolfman, George Perez. When they did that volume of Teen Titans, they brought her in the first time. She's not the first character to have the Starfire name. But when they brought right. this version of Starfire in, she saw, you know, the team there. And she was automatically, you know, love at first sight, I guess, attraction. And she's been very faithful to that vision. She's not mm-hmm. the one that doesn't, you know, makes it hard for for Nightwing to be with her it's it's Richard Grayson Dick Grayson who's not sure like he's in one moment he's out the next moment he's in he's out she's been unfaltering with her love towards uh you know towards Nightwing right it's him that kind of goes back and forth and I think it's because he still has that his true love is he's got true two loves uh, for different reasons well, and it's mm-hmm. Barbara Gordon Barbara Gordon is his rock right but if it can't be Barbara, it's going to be Starfire. But, it, you know, Correct. it was almost she, sometimes she felt like a rebound, but she mm-hmm. was in it for the longest time until they officially ended things and she got over it. She went on her own thing, but she didn't really date overly anyone really else. She dated, but not like hardcore. Right. Um, and, and I was like, Dick, man, I'm mean, like, you, you can't get one. Make, make a decision, brother. Make a decision. But, <laughs> and they show what happens if you read the Kingdom Come a mini series there that was painted by Alex Ross, and you mm-hmm. read that one, you, you see how that parlays out into the future, right? Because they have a child together, yeah. so they always kind of mm-hmm. go back and forth with these two. So that one is definitely one for the. It's a lot of meat on that bone, mm-hmm. right? You know, truly, 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 no question about that. Um, so yeah, that's who I have. And all right, let's bounce back. Who do you got on your list? Uh. You know what? We're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk real quickly about uh, Marvel's first family. Oh, yes, Marvel's yes, I had that family. too. Go on. So we will talk about uh, if we haven't figured it out. Hopefully, we're on the same page. Yes, I think we are. Mister Fantastic. Yes, and the Invisible Woman. Don't there you deal. go. There Don't you deal. go. So, so they are definitely they're they're that type of relationship, that couple type of unity. Is unity. the uni is <laughs> you and I T Y <laughs> so the thing is for me I like about them in the sense that they are the and I, I've thought of it a couple of times and I just can't recall anybody else, but definitely correct me wrong, anybody on there as well. Mm-hmm. But not being that 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 first family, but they are that family unit that in that sense, like they were a couple. Yes, they yeah. came up, they didn't have kids at the time, whatever the case is, but they were the very mature family type of father and mother although they didn't have kids you know you know what i mean like they had yeah, that yeah. type of relationship in the sense i think like okay you don't really ha- i can't really think of anybody like that anybody else's relationship relationship you know boyfriend girlfriend you know mm-hmm. and, and you know and then would have gone over into marriage if anything but not that many do do that but to me whenever you think of couples and you think of mr fantastic and invisible women you know richard and susan are just basically like yeah those are the people that you aspire to be like if if i can get my marriage to be better i want my marriage to be like them that's right. the kind of conversation you you have in your head so I, I i definitely wanted to just bring them to light in regards of um it's one of those things that richard even the show in the show and and, and it's a movie but the thing i see that about Everybody that we've spoken to, I'm just going over my I could I write I wanted to write down the list and make sure I didn't forget anybody. Right, right. Uh, like Nightwing and, and Starfire. You know what? I'm not I will admit personally myself, I haven't really been caught up too too much on Titan to understand to, f- to find the relationship bound, you know, settings on that, like what their levels of relationship is in there. And I'm sure it definitely at that point it's just still they're just co workers. So there's yeah, no yeah, relationship, they anything at that time. Each other. They still get along. There's no it, they've dealt with the feelings uh, of it back and forth and and, and Starfire knows that. Even she's very aware that as much as she loves Dick, she knows that he loves um, Barbara, right? And right. she, under, she, they've come to a place where they accepted it. and She's moved on. That, that's for sure. Right, you but know? I mean, in the show, I, mean, I was like, like oh, in, the show, in the show, in, in, in the, the movie, show, in the show, yeah. in the yeah, Titan no, show. They yeah, they really covered that more. No, that's show. what I'm saying. I don't think they have really touched that in that aspect of it. But everybody else, at least, has always been some type of full, big screen or small screen type of adaptation that they've kind of brought these guys together. So mm-hmm. same thing with Mister Fantastic and Invisible Woman. When when you see any of the 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 reboot, the original, the reboot, and everything like that. Richard always kind of like fell over heels for Susan mm-hmm. from from Jump. So you know yep. there was a lo- love attraction going on right there. Uh, Susan definitely liked 
and had that type of, oh, and I saw the puppy boy kind of like, oh, you know, you're just trailing behind me, whatever the case would be. But the relationship definitely grew from there and it was genuine. And you can see that, you know, these guys definitely love each other and that they, you know, work Absolutely. together as a type of unit to basically say, listen, we have our, again, I was about to say, everybody's like they're yin and yang, you know, whatever, whatever yep. the qualities of one helps the other. So Richard, of course, of course, you know, Mr. Fantastic, always brainiac type thinking, always yep. logical, logical, logical. Susan is the one who kind of comes up. Okay, okay. Let's, let's come out. Let's come out from the, let's come out from the lab. Let's think about it. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. And yeah. Go from there. You know, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, a lot of times he seems to get obsessed with the lab. And I think like more recently in the past years, they drew him like, they writ, not drew him, they writ, wrote him like he's mm -hmm. so obsessed that he forgets everything. And and that right. aspect I'm not keen on. I, I like the earlier, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Jack Kirby run on it. Like when you bring him around, they were, they, they're not so much heroes, they're family. They're mm -hmm. adventurers. I see them more of a feel of an Indiana Jones explorer kind of adventurer kind of thing with the whole mm -hmm. dynamic of it. She likes the adventure. She can stand on her own. Clearly, I know when they first made it. I mean, the book is a little bit dated if you read some of it now. You know, still mm -hmm. great reading. But mm -hmm. it was almost like they treated her like the damsel in distress. And then they turn around and you find out she's actually the strongest person on the team. Right? right? Stronger than Johnny and, and, and the rest of them. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because of her powers. So but the relationship and this is what i like their relationship he was there he he had to go and still do stuff and then still was there for her when they they talked about um you know the ups and downs of the relationship they talked about you know as real as it can be to keep it authentic you know their, their childbirth uh, and the issues they had with childbirth because of you know they've been bought with com uh, cosmic radiation so they've gone through that the whole thing with franklin you know mm -hmm. uh, his sister valerie who came into play later on so they really put that family dynamic there a lot. There's times where she had to cuss him and there's times that she supported him and she really understands him more than anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and he does her too. He just gets so caught up with his brain never stops. He, he can never turn his brain off. That's, but when that's, he does, he's a loving husband, but they sometimes they write him a little bit too cold, but you're right. First family right there, money. That that's, a, that's a couple that really works well in mm -hmm. the in the in the Marvel universe, and I, I yeah. they really need to kind of capture that essence better for the big screen. It can't mm -hmm. be like, oh, reads in his lab again. I'm offended, and then you know Sue walks off. That's that's tried and played out. You got to get a little bit deeper with the writing. Go back to the original source material. See how they handled it back in the day. It will transfer well to the screen, big or small. That right. you know, and even for the original writers, I know they stopped the book. They got to bring the book back. Alex Ross did his pitch and how he have the characters looking and come on go with it. no i think alex ross is actually doing it there's a new fantastic four comic book coming out that's true with alex ross uh behind it so <laughs> i'm all about oh, alex yeah. ross because he's a huge catch man fan <laughs> <laughs> yes right battle of the planets g-force if you know me you know it um here we go yeah right uh all right so okay so that I, I i like that here here's one in a different universe right it's currently dc right now but prior to that let, let's jump over to image Image Comics, when they mm. first came out, right? Jim Lee had his team, the Wildcats. Oh, um, um, yeah, go on, go on, yeah, go on. With Spartan and, and Voodoo Ooh. and, 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 you know, uh, 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 oh, oh my God, I can't remember the team. I have to Google it, like Rip Claw. And, uh, but anyway, but the people, yeah, the yeah. two I'm focusing on is Zealot and Grifter. Yeah, I'm about to say that. That's who I was like, I can, I can see him, right. Who was yeah. who was it? It was yeah, Grifter, but I couldn't remember who he, he was. Was Zalit? Zalit, yeah, right? Perfect. Right. So she's long lived. Oh, it comes man. down that she seems that she was in that universe in Image. She was like an Amazon warrior ish. I mean, that's how the, her her myth comes in. Like, like the Coda were formed. They came from a different planet with some of the uh, other members there. You know, mm -hmm. they're long lived. Um, you see that the, the sisters were you know kind of tied in, and they were what's behind the myth of the Amazon warriors, right? And mm -hmm. Zealot was like the leader of that. And, you know, she got betrayed and left. And so anyways, Grifter was out there with Team 7, which is like, you know, they're, um, you know, let's just put it like, come on, almost like a Team 7 was like the Howling Commandos prior powers, but they were experimented on, you know, like Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos. So mm -hmm. they're experimented on, they had like certain levels of abilities. Uh, Grifter showed his and he joins Wildcats. And But there was a mission where, you know, they ran into each other. She ends up saving him. 
And then they had a relationship and they, they did have issues. Now, when the time you get to the Wildcats comic books, they've had their relationship and the relationship ended, but mm-hmm. they're still working on the same team. And there's no animosity there. You know, they, they, anything they had to deal with emotional wise was been already dealt with at that point. I would have loved to see maybe prior, like they talked about it in the original run here and there, you know, some flashbacks, but I would love to see full out relationship with Zealot, with Grifter, give them their own series you know hmm. grifter he's a con man he's 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 almost got like gambit tendency so he's a con man he's a mercenary um zealot taught him how to fight like he was a sold he was a good soldier before but then she taught him really everything about hand-to-hand combat he was a, and that's what they never explored enough with grifter he was a man that was taught the ways of the sisters how to fight yes. with those special blades. Yeah. One of them. And she even says, it's like, you know, the way you fight right now, you would think some days that I never trained you. You you are the only man that understands our ways and our fighting techniques. And you don't really seem to use them. You always rely on your guns. You're a better fighter than that. And he's kind of, yeah, you see he's a little bit of a slacker. But that that line just shows me how much more dangerous Grifter is mm-hmm. in combat. Grifter's no slouch. He, he might run his mouth a lot, a little bit like Deadpool, and he, he might be like Gambit and flirty and all that, but it shows you how dangerous he is. And for Zealot to turn around, who's almost like their version of an Amazon warrior in that universe, yep. to have feelings for him, to lay with him, to, to train him, and it oh, yeah. shows that she saw something special in him. And I would, that's a relationship that could be just its own ongoing series, Zealot and Grifter, but, but put them in a relationship, you know, uh, again, don't just make them <laughs> partners and okay, fine. No, 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 no. Jim Lee was on to something, and it was even a three issue miniseries that was drawn and written by Jay Lee of Wildcats, you know, with Zealot and Grifter. <sighs> Deep, sick, wicked, you know, to be, and, and that's more what I've seen. So, image, and, 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 and just like people would know, I mean, there's more couples out there that we're talking about, but we're really focusing on couples that know. The other one has powers, not ones that, oh, well, let's say, well, this person had powers and they were married. Yeah, but if their significant other didn't know or didn't support them, those are not the ones we're talking about. We're talking about ones that knew, supported them, and was all up in the madness. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm going with. Zealot and Grifter. Okay. All right. You, you got another so, one there, Rod? Yeah, I got a couple, but I, I it's, it's like I was going to go say something right now, but yeah, I was sure. going to say someone. I said, no, no, no. I was going to say a set, but then you just kind of now rearrange rearrange me again now i have to bring these people out real quickly okay. so let's let's talk about uh steve trevor and wonder woman oh 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 okay good call okay go for it go for it so i mean straight goods if you don't know or don't recall steve trevor is the in any of the type of the uh renditions of wonder woman majority of them they always have uh, uh you know wonder woman is on cemetery you know, all women by themselves and, you know, no contact with the world of man and anything like that. And then a plane, a, a pilot crashes into Cemetery and, and then boom, out comes this particular person saved by Wonder Woman, Diana Prince herself. And Princess Diana, let's, let's, let's do the proper, on, she's on she's on her land, let's call her Princess Diana and we don't call That's her right. on our land. We don't call her the other, we don't swap it on that way. That's so right. Princess Diana saved her name. Puts respect, her respect, name, respect, man. respect, respect on her name. So Princess Diana comes and saves this individual by the name of Steve Trevor and basically he's fallen in love with her. Oh my goodness, the heavens save me and da da da. And uh, she, she's like, all right, man, cool, cool, wonderful, you know, whatever the case would be. But I I've always liked the 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 uh, the way they've always written that these two are like yes it's like Steve has always, Steve has always been infatuated infatuated with 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 Diana always yeah. running after her type of scenario right and has always been the one like yeah pushing him off putting him back whatever case to be and not taking that type of thought to to have any type of relationship with him until you know when she comes to the the world of men and then you know see things differently and along you know and they just basically their their connection and their 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 um working as co-workers in that sense you know for you know the justice league well basically just getting him just getting her assimilated into the world of men yes. <laughs> into western civilization and she's basically you know 
follow him and just you know took his advice and you know and and connected from that aspect so it's always been interesting how um that couple dynamic was one is always seen from the beginning everybody else has always been like you know they like each other at the same time this is one of those couples that it actually was one-sided first yep. then slowly came back and you can see in enough of the renditions of different animated you know different movies different animated um it's always been portrayed like that. Uh, my mind just went straight to the anime one, which is um, with Flash going back. That's the, the Secret Society one. I'm just, my mind is now. Oh, 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 uh, not Flashpoint. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's Justice Society. I think it's, it's Justice Society. Yeah, Justice yeah. Society, yeah. Flash, yeah. Flash, Flash, Flashpoint and the Justice Society one. Yeah, yeah. where basically you get, like, that's an example of him just always like, saying, will you marry? And then like, all, everybody's like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah. So as girls running down this woman, this woman yep. just like saying, "Man, just give up, man. She don't want you, bro. She don't want you." And then at the last minute, oh, I, you know, man, the man's about to die out. It was hilarious. But you know, it's it's always funny that these this relationship was always. Uh, it's like the the um, what's the word I want to say in the sense like you know it. It's like she's working. No, she's playing hard to get. Yes. yes. Wonder Woman is ba- basically being that hard to get card and. Yes. And it's, and it's always interesting that I, I love this in the sense that you don't the writers were, were, were great and making that and you don't have a lot of characters doing that. So you're basically approaching relationships from different aspects. And this is one aspect. You always have someone who, you know, you may have a relationship where someone is playing hard to get. They actually like them, but I'm making it hard for you yep. to, 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 to win me over. Hunt. The thrill of the hunt. And Steve had no problem just going. I'm going for the hunt, son. I'm going in for the hunt. That's, yeah, that's he, was, Steve he, was all, he was all in, man. He was he was not all turning in. down. All right, okay, I, I got that. So on the segue, because I had that, but I had a little extra on that one. Okay, right. So you know, you have Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor. I agree with you mm-hmm. with everything you say right there, 100. percent No question about it. You know, it. um, and I and I think that's a couple that they got together. You know, her. And then later on, they write her as like an ambassador for Themyscira. I mean, that was always her role, but they put her in the UN. Right. UN. Uh, yes. Kind of doing that now. At one point, Steve Trevor's not around, and in one of the more his storylines came out years ago, before the, the new Fifty Two and all that. There was another person she started dating, right? That they went back and forth. He was a non-powered person. His name was Trevor Barnes. Trevor Barnes, right? Trevor Barnes was a humanitarian. He worked for the UN. He was going around, and he has no powers, no nothing mm-hmm. like that at all. And they did give him. Uh, a relationship with Wonder Woman, not a flirtatious relationship where they just flirted and nothing did. They were actually officially boyfriend and girlfriend in the DC universe. And what made a lot of people turn their heads was one, he had no powers. He mm-hmm. wasn't a villain. He wasn't a clone of everybody. And he was black. Not, not light skin. He was full mm-hmm. of black, not mixed. He was mm-hmm. full of black in mm-hmm. the UN. And they dated until um, he ended up passing away, you know, when she, and, she, and he used to go around the world with her on different missions because she was really all about with kind of being a humanitarian. And, and that was a great storyline. So, you know, and she saw a lot of similarities in Trevor Barnes that she saw in Steve mm-hmm. Trevor, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, of course, yes, the name is there, but I mean, just their character and a persona and right. so didn't want to miss out on that one. So I like that. Trevor Barnes shows up and, and they have that relationship and, and they don't they don't go around it. They say it is a relationship, a mature relationship beginning to end on all aspects. They're holding mm-hmm. hands, going out in dates, the whole nine yards of what you have a relationship. And it was no stupidness of, um, oh, I can't believe, uh, you know, there's times that he's like kind of in shock and like, I'm dating Wonder Woman, you know, but he got over that really quick and she liked him just as much as he liked her. Right. That that's that's. I think that's one that needs to be brought in. It doesn't get covered enough, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and, it, and of course this is, I mean, it's, it's we're talking about, um, uh, you know, Valentine's day special. Cause this is what we're doing this one for, but this takes place within black history month. And I think black history should be celebrated year round, not just a month. And that's great, but mm-hmm. you know, we're doing it for this, for black history month. I'm showing some light. So seeing that the character was non, non superpowered, never intended to get superpowers. And he was black. It was like, what? Reading that comic book as a young man, I was like, wait a minute, I had a chance. Wonder Woman? <laughs> Quick, someone call Linda Carter. We already shared the same last name. We're good. We're good. There's no need to change it. Oh, Lars. Okay. So now that, you know, we got a couple, we got a couple more to do. And definitely I was kind of like, we're segueing to that. 
So right. you know what? In, in, well, hold on. Hold on. Let, let, oh, you got more. Okay, no, go. I, I, no, no, I got more. So this is what we're going to do because I know this episode is getting long, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to end this one here. Yeah. And we're going to come back and we're going to continue this list. So stay true. Stay, you know, stay tuned, true believers. <laughs> true believers. More to come because <laughs> when there's so much love to go around, sometimes you got to put it in two. You got to take a little bit of a break and then we got to come on back. Gotcha. <laughs> so on that note. Mm-hmm. This is Battery 3D for Deep Dark Delicious. On my side, as always, my cousin who? DJ Rod C. DJ Let's Rod C. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Iconist podcast. More to come on this subject. And as Definitely. I always like to say, this whole world that we talk about was created mm-hmm. by a pencil, a piece of paper, and imagination. Keep on dreaming. Saturday, love. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday.